Hi everyone, welcome to our fourth episode of Three Question Thursdays. Today's episode is a bit different though, as we have two guests this time, the chairpersons of our Western India and Bengaluru chapters. So Rabin Mirchandani is the chairperson of our Western India chapter, as many of you might know. He is the executive chairman for Adore Parchon Limited, Accusensis and director for McValves. He's a business leader with significant international experience, having directly lived and worked in six countries across Europe and Asia. His experience spans the cryogenic, defense, telecom, energy and traffic infrastructure industries. He's an Australian national who lives in Pune. He's an alumnus of the Queensland University of Technology, Brisbane. Um, this month marks the first anniversary of our Western India chapter which has done some amazing work over the last 12 months. So congratulations to you, Ravan, and to the Western India Chapter Committee. It's, it's great to have you here. And thank you for having me on the Three Questions Thursday. So the Otto Group has a 110 year history of innovating and facilitating change in India, be it in air pollution, traffic management and safety, homeland security or national defence. Um, now more than ever, companies uh, need to innovate and um, as we know, innovation comes in different forms. So Ravan, my question is, um, as Executive Chairman, what are um, the transformational changes that you are leading for Adore during these times and to ensure that it continues to always make a profit, which is one of the company's four core values I've read. The question you ask, which is likely to be the most difficult question to answer in 2020. Um, our core value, in fact, is uh, people are the purpose, but profit is the means. Um, 2020 has shown that uh, focusing on profits isn't going to be possible. It's really about sustainability and resilience um, to make sure that you're around uh, at the other side of the tunnel and still available when the sun rises for a glorious new day. Uh, and that's the case no matter which geography you look at or which industry sector you look at. Um, when we speak to the CEOs of our large customers, uh, whether they're in the UK, Europe, America or Australia or even India, there is a very strong sense of optimism that there will be a demand rebound at the end of the lockdown period. Uh, yet, when I speak to the CEOs of our suppliers, the story is very different. Uh, again, suppliers, whether they're in Europe or Australia or in India, are facing a severe liquidity shortage because of the fast and rapid disappearance of credit from the markets because of conservatism by the banks at this moment in time. In India in particular, um, we are also seeing a crippling labor shortage uh, with the disappearance of migrant labor, which has all gone back to their native towns. So the ability of suppliers to keep the supply chain healthy, particularly if they're SMEs anywhere in the world, is going to be challenging, which means it's going to be a difficult year for all of us. All of us, no matter where we are, no matter which industry we're in. So our focus in order to make sure that we're resilient and around at the end of the tunnel has been to bring forward solutions and services that we have planned to launch three or four years from today to actually three or four months from today. We are now offering our customers mid-life upgrades on their equipment to make sure that it's more effective, more efficient, available for longer, uh, less uh, mean time between failures, um, which means that we will have lesser revenues and be more focused on services, but also means that we will be much closer to our customers and much more embedded in their production processes. So we believe these are interesting innovations, these are interesting times, and remain quietly confident um, of all that will happen and change through this lockdown period. Thank you, Rabin. Always good to get your perspective and um, thank you for sharing some of Adore's plans with us. I'd like to now introduce John Kenny, who has recently taken over as chairperson for our Bengaluru chapter. John is the director for Gas Services India, part of one of Australia's largest and most successful retailer, Kmart Australia. In this role, John is accountable for leading the Capability Centre, for technology, analytics, inventory, data platform, and digital capability strategy. Prior to joining CAS, uh, John had a seven-year stint at Kmart Australia, leading its retail transformation at Asda Walmart UK and Boots the Chemist UK. Thank you, John, and it's, it's great to have you here. 
Hi Petula, hi everyone. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. So CAS Services is the Innovation and Technology Services hub of Kmart uh, with a very impressive state-of-the-art office in uh, Bangalore. And I remember when I visited last year, there were plans for growth and expansion in other areas as well. Um, so John, with COVID-19, um, what has changed for CAS Services now and what trends do you foresee in the retail industry for the rest of the year? In some ways, not a lot has changed for us as a business. Uh, here in Bangalore, we continue to focus on providing high-end capability to our businesses and customers in Australia and New Zealand. We've been able to adapt as a team to the new norm quickly uh, and together. Um, working from home, being effective has worked really well for us, very well. Uh, we have the benefit of being digitally enabled. Um, we're in an environment and an ecosystem such as Bangalore, which helps us enormously. If I look at the retail industry and what I've experienced so far in the lockdown in Bangalore, I see on re online retail continue to play a, a big part. I also see the way we work in our offices change. We are now reliant on cloud-based technology to enable working from home, uh, being more flexible and adaptable with our hours, with our team members. We will, for, we will for sure uh, have a hybrid of the two working environments in the future. I think for that is that's changed. As a team in crisis, we don't spend our entire time just managing the crisis. Uh, looking and thinking beyond this is, has always been very important to us and we'll continue to do that as well. Thanks a lot, John, for that, which kind of brings me on to my last question, which is about people. And that's to both you and Raven, as one of the similarities that I've noticed from having interacted with your teams in uh, Pune and uh, Bengaluru, is that both of you have been instrumental in building a winning workplace culture and putting people at the heart of operations. Um, so every business is challenged today. And my question is, what are some of the strategies or actions that you and your leadership team are taking? to ensure that you maintain your team's morale and productivity? Engagement, that's a very good question, Pichula. We went into this lockdown with a little bit of dread about how we're going to keep our team engaged because everyone's so far away, uh, 250 families working differently. Um, and I've been quite surprised at how uh, we have transformed uh, uh, and how humanity really has learned to adapt to this new virtual world. Everybody's moved to an online platform and we are no different. Um, we uh, now have innovated uh, different ways to make sure that our team's engaged uh, and most importantly to measure the emotional health of all of our team members on a daily basis. So we have a formal uh, check-in and check-out huddle for every member of our team daily. So everybody meets in small teams uh, for five minutes at the start of every day and the end of every day, which sets the parameters of the workday. Uh, beyond which you should really be with family and in the check-ins we are actually checking emotional health how are people feeling what are their challenges how they can be supported to overcome issues that they might be having um, we also run a lot of engagement programs that we would not normally have run uh, that are fun that are frivolous that are uh, that are um, Funny, I guess, is the is the best way to say it, um, to keep everybody connected to each other. I'm personally also involved with uh, what we call chai time, which is uh, get a cup of tea and sit down and shoot the breeze. And we do this periodically with every member of the team. Also to go over how the spirits are and what needs to be done by the company to make sure that everybody is at their most optimal mental and emotional level. Um, it's been challenging, uh, but um, the human race is so incredibly adaptable. Uh, I think it'll almost be a little bit weird when people go back to work and are sitting face to face and having to deal with uh, each other physically, uh, which will seem a bit strange after 50 or 60 days in a lockdown. I would echo all what uh, Ravina's mentioned. Uh, we are very similar in a lot of regards, as I'm sure a lot of our members and uh, companies um, across the globe are as well. If I look at us in particular and maybe some of the challenges both individually and as a team that we've had, um, what's worked well for us? Um, we continue to remain connected as a leadership group daily um, and and also as a team daily. Um, all our teams have their regular stand-ups, uh, they're very well connected with their, uh, their team members over in Australia. Um, having a young workforce which is digitally native has helped our ability to communicate uh, through all the different collaboration tools at our disposal. 
Um, the teams do place a lot of emphasis on introducing fun into the meetings. Uh, we have a lot of connects across various levels throughout the week. Some of the initiatives the teams come up with uh, do bring the best out in everyone. Um, and, it, and, it, and I think when you're looking at a crisis like this, it does bring out the best uh, in, in people uh, and the want of people to do more uh, and to support each other as well. We've seen more focus on engagement and well-being than I have ever experienced previously. Um, so what what was the challenge? Well, we've we've lost, I would say, a lot of the softer aspects of being in the office. That interaction, um, we've had to learn to work in a very different environment than we used to. Uh, given that we are such a young organisation with a lot of new team members, getting people embedded into their roles and the company culture has has been has been challenging. Um, however. Continual engagement and open collaboration, communication, um, and what we've seen work well for us uh, is what's made the difference. Um, I think for the team overall, it, what ma what's made it all work and what makes it look relatively easy has been those teams and team members. So I've got to thank them very much for that. Thank you. Well, some fantastic ideas of keeping teams engaged and motivated. And with that, uh, thank you so much, uh, Raven and John, for being here with us today. And I'm sure our members found it uh, to be a useful opportunity to get to know you as well. Um, and thanks to all of those who are watching this. Um, on behalf of the Bengaluru chapter committee, I wanted to invite you to our next webinar. Um, it's on COVID-19, survival and growth strategies for IT and IT-enabled services. Uh, it's on Friday, 29th May, and we really hope that you can join us there. And until next Thursday, have a great week. Bye then. Mm -hmm.